Chris made several determined attempts at a comeback, each time re-injuring the knee. 75 would not be a gold buckle year. But in 1976, Chris was making a comeback. When he got to the Phoenix Rodeo, he was fourth in the standings and riding well. Unfortunately, he drew a horse he would never forget. Her name was Molly Brown. She was making a good ride, felt great, and she made a little turn to the left and kind of straightened my arm out, and I felt something hit me in the neck, and it, it was like someone hitting you in the neck with a hammer. And then it happened again. <laughs> but no, something's definitely wrong. Chris discovered he had separated his collarbone. He tried to tape himself together, but no matter how creative he got with athletic tape, Chris could not hold his collarbone together well enough to compete. By July, he was in danger of slipping out of contention for the national finals. He trained as hard as his body would let him and planned his schedule down to the wire, winning just enough to keep himself eligible for the finals in December. Chris Ledoux was on the downhill slide. He had taken so much abuse, it wasn't even funny. I watched him at Dodge City, Kansas, where he had his shirt off, and the guy, I mean, he's a big guy. Um, big, raw bone frame, you know, just tough. And he had his shirt off and was taping up, and it must have took him 30 minutes to get completely taped. It was real scary to him in that, I think, for the first time, he began to see his own mortality. 